Hello friends, it's been a while since I posted on YouTube. I've been super busy with Foundation's game version 1.9 update. It required completely reworking a lot of my mods. With 60 plus mods in production, that was a big job. So I've spent months and months actually getting ready for this. The game released a month ago. I think today I'm finally in a position where almost all of my mods are working. I've been doing lots of testing playthroughs over the last few weeks. So I'm currently using Foundation's experimental branch, which includes the new map generator. The only issue with using this version is that custom maps don't really work, at least most of the ones that I've tried. And I don't know, let's see, Coastal... Coastal tends to use up a lot of the map with the water, which is not always a good thing for people like me who like to uh, kind of spread out. Mm, might be nice to have some islands, but again, a lot of these islands are quite small. I might just go with Fluvial, get ourselves a decent map here. So kind of the windy river with a few lakes. I do like islands though, and I like it when the islands are in the middle of the map. I'm going to try and see if I can get a river map with islands. So that's a big river. Okay, that one has a little island in the middle of a broad valley. Keep trying. That one's, that one's interesting because it has that narrow neck of land there in the lake. Let's see what that one looks like. And I'm going to do Bachushki's Mod Pack, which is now back in is re-released with all of the new mods that I've added since 1.9 as well as taken away quite a few mods that were retired with game version 1.9. There were quite a few things that the devs incorporated into the game which were part of my previous mods, especially the Influence and Estates mod, which was completely replaced by the new System of Prosperity. The Monastic Life mod had a lot of pieces that were added to the vanilla game, so I took those pieces out, but that mod still exists. So there were quite a few changes to the mod list, but uh, I also added a few new mods. I added one called Skilled Jobs, which forces higher skilled jobs to all be commoners and citizens. This is partially implemented in vanilla, but I wanted to make sure to do that because with the new money system and foundation, there's really no incentive in the vanilla game to to promote people or higher status and i wanted to make sure that that was really still a part of the game so this mod requires you to have higher statuses for better jobs and i also added a mod which is not in my mod pack but it's kind of an optional one called mud which turns the soil into mud so i'm going to add that as well just to see it makes the game look a little bit better than it normally would i also added a mod which is in the mod pack called swords and spears it's here so this simply swaps swords with spears. So if you're if you've played Foundation before, you know that you get swords at the beginning, and then later on you get spears, and spears are more powerful. But I always thought that was strange, because you know spears anybody can make a spear, but a sword is kind of a highly crafted item. So I just swapped them. So now swords are spears, and spears are swords. So you get spears at the beginning of the game, and then swords you can make later or win them in missions. So I've added the mod pack. I'm going to go ahead and remove the mod pack from the mod list. So once you've added the mod pack to, to this mod list, you can go ahead and take out the three mod pack uh, items, and that'll allow you to mix and match and add or remove other mods if you don't like all the ones that I have in there. I should say one really what I thought of as an annoying mod that I had before was the Dragon's Mod. Um, the Dragon's Mod is okay. I mean, it was a technical achievement for me to create those dragons given all the limitations that we have as modders with foundation but i just always found it annoying that the dragons would come and burn down your town so i took that out and the fire mod has also changed so i still have the fire mod but it's only it's kind of a voluntary fire mod so villagers don't start fires you can start fires to clear forests and stuff but the, the fires don't start themselves the experimental map generator has some limitations at the moment one of the limitations is that uh, you can't save a map seed. So like this map is basically like a one-off and I can't share it with anyone and I can't load it up myself. I have to say, actually, looking at this, looking at the way that the map generator works, um, it doesn't look great with the mud on the rivers. So I think I'm going to take the mud map, or the mud mod out. But I'm just going to check out this map first to see if I like it. It's got quite an interesting set of rivers. Uh, a lot of people are complaining that the map generator creates really hilly terrain, and it, it definitely does create hilly terrain, but I actually love hills. 
I don't really like flat maps that much. I, I like this one. It's got a huge forest in the middle. Uh, lots of hills, kind of a central valley, but not a huge valley. So you'd be kind of forced to, f to farm up the valley sides, which I like. I actually, I actually kind of like this map. And I like the fact that there's multiple water uh, sources. This river could be a little wider, but it's more like a, a creek at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my starting territory, and then I'm going to exit out, and I'll show you how to take out a, ma a mod once you've actually already started the game. But let's think about where uh, we'd like to start the game. So I really love this aspect of the new experimental branch where the territories are not hexagons anymore. I think it's fantastic um, that they're so varied. Like, in, for example, this territory, you get a little bit of water so you can have fishing, you also go all the way up the mountain so you have that really long territory. This one here you have a huge waterfront but not a lot of land. Kind of a different choice. And remember too in game version 1.9 you get two territories to start. So I could, for instance, I could settle this territory and then I could also get a territory that has water because uh, it is nice, especially with the Seasons mod, having some access to fishing got this hillside here which is very interesting because it actually accesses two parts of the same river and all the hill in between it's quite quite the territory look at that shape uh, I'd be interested to see how their algorithm works but I think it basically works by first defining the small territories which are these ones with the mineral nodes and then it sort of fills in around that but like looking at this territory it's at least 50% larger than the original kind of hexagonal territories, maybe even more. It's quite a large territory. So I have found in my test plays that you get a lot more um, territory, especially at the start of the game, with this new system because the territories are just, they're simply bigger, you know? especially because they usually include water. That's quite an interesting territory, but it's also super hilly, um, which might, you know, make it difficult to get started on the farming. Although what I could do is I could I could get this one, put my village center here or here, kind of in this narrow neck of land I was talking about. And then I could also access this one here for forestry and stuff. So that maybe that's what I'll do. So I'll go ahead and start with this one. And turn the UI mod mode back on. Now this village center, this cart, you may recognize this from the influence and estates mod. It's now been added to a different mod which is i'm trying to think is it balancing for realism yeah i think it's balancing for realism has now incorporated this cart the cart has all the stuff you need basically for the beginning of the game so instead of showing up with nothing except some boxes you now have this cart and it will satisfy some of the needs that you have during the beginning of the game i kind of like a little resource generator so it's the village center, so I'm going to make sure it's kind of in a place where I'm happy to have the center of the town later, which I think will be right here, which would be great. Build that. And as part of the new, it used to be called the, the Times and Seasons mod, and now it's called Seasons and Weather, uh, because I took out all of the random events that would happen in that mod, I just found that they weren't useful given all the new events that are being added to vanilla. It wasn't great to have a ton of extra events being added, so I took all those out. Uh, but I added something new in, which is climate. So instead of just having four seasons for every map, now you can pick the climate at the beginning of the game. And because I'm creating some desert maps and some different tropical maps, I wanted to have the option of having different season effects. So like Cool Temperate would be somewhere like Britain, where you have four seasons in most of the country. Uh, warm temperate would be somewhere like southern France or Italy, uh, or Spain perhaps even. Uh, tropical would be somewhere like the Atlantic Islands of Spain and Portugal, where you have like a dry season and a wet season. So warm temperate doesn't have a very long winter, but it has a really long summer, so it's tough to get through the summer. Cool temperate is tough to get through the winter. In tropical, it's tough to get through the dry season, which, which also happens to be the hot season. And then in the desert climate, it basically hardly ever rains. I tested a game where I played for like three years in game and it never rained the whole time. Um, so it's it's hot and dry, but the temperatures change throughout the year. So really in that uh, climate, you're dealing with the really hot dry season and then you get a sort of cooler season. Obviously this 
this map that I've picked here is going to be more suitable for either cool temperate or warm temperate. I think I'll just go with the standard cool temperate. And another aspect of seasons and weather that's been changed is I've given some movement to the sun. So if you have a lower end computer or even, even a mid tier computer, you might want to turn off sun movement when you get this selection because it can create the sun moving through the sky can create these kind of flickers in the shadows, which is really annoying. If you have a good computer, a uh, high-end graphics card, turning sun movement on will give you a more realistic seasons because during the winter, the shadows will be longer and the sun is obviously moving all the time, but the shadows will be longer in winter and shorter in summer. And so it makes the world look a little brighter in summer and in winter, it makes it look more shadowy. Turn that on. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the game and I also am going to grab that second territory, which I think, you know, I could take this one here, which would give me this entire set of, hmm, might make more sense at the moment just to take this one, because I do have plenty of room for forestry over here. So I'll take this nice big chunk of territory. So you can already see that this is probably the equivalent of three of the original hexagonal territories. So it's nice that I have that additional space. And I'm going to save the game because I want to take the mud mod out since I am not too happy with it. So we'll call this the Twisted River for now until we come up with a better name. I'm going to go ahead and load it. So I saved it and now I'm going to load it. I'm going to edit mods. I'm just going to take out that mud mod so that we get the normal beaches. I think that'll look better. The mud mod is great for, for maps that don't have beaches. Uh, which a lot of maps actually don't, either hills maps or maps that the grass grows right down into the water. But because of the way that they've done these generated maps, there's a lot of beach space and the, the beaches are really shallow, uh, which makes that mud mod not, not look right. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the vanilla. So yeah, now it looks a lot better. Now, some other changes that have happened to the mod pack uh, all of the normal things are still there, so basic materials where you need thatch and clay to get started, that's there, but you're given more thatch and clay because I was finding it quite difficult to build and upgrade the first set of houses due to all the other changes to the beginning of the game. So I increased the amount that you get there. I also increased the number of tools that you get, and you'll find out why later that the trading has been dramatically changed in the, in the game, and it's much tougher now to get enough tools uh, at the beginning of the game because you're really strapped for cash. They did do a balancing pass with the game, so it's easier than it was a few weeks ago, but it still can be challenging. So I added more tools to the game at the beginning. Uh, you'll also notice you have lots of berries and lots of fuel, and some of that fuel is here. So if I click on the village center, the cart that I come with comes with 100 berries. So there's 100 berries in the cart, and then there's another 100, now 98 that are uh, in the village center, so to speak. So those are like the, the beginning stock, but this card itself will sell 100 berries to the villagers. So they don't have to have markets or wells or fuel carts or churches at the beginning. This cart will satisfy all those needs 100 times, which is, you know, 10 villagers. That's probably gonna last a couple weeks. So that's good because that will uh, prevent me from having to build tons of infrastructure right at the beginning in order to keep my serfs from leaving. And there's a reason why this is important now. The balancing for realism mod is making it going to make it much harder to keep your villagers because as soon as they drop below 100% happiness, any individual villager, they will leave the town. And in the vanilla game, you may have noticed you can crank up taxation, you can make people super unhappy, like negative 400% unhappy, and they won't leave town. And I thought that was kind of silly. So in the balancing for realism mod, yeah, they are going to leave if they get unhappy. So we need to make sure their needs are being met at the beginning until I can build a church and a well and all the infrastructure that they need. Um, one other fun change that I made, I, I used to have a mod called Big and Small, which made the villagers taller or shorter or fatter or skinnier. And I added to that mod so that now villagers have different hair colors so you can see i have a bunch of blonde people i have some light brown hair actually it looks like i got a lot of blondies in this group i got a red-haired lady over here 
and uh, some people have dark hair so none of the men here have dark hair but you'll see men coming in dark hair and then you get kind of the vanilla color in here which is these two people but then i preserved obviously the effect where villagers are taller or shorter or fatter so like this guy is really tall and she's short and the last change that i made was i changed their names so each person still has a name uh, and by the way there's 10,000 names now you may know that if you play foundation for long enough the game runs out of names and it starts calling people like male number 565 so I added 10,000 names to the balancing for realism mod and I gave a nickname to everybody so everybody has kind of these interesting names so like this really tall dude is Athelstan the Swallower so apparently he has a weird way of swallowing and this guy over here is A the Snob <laughs> We all know what the he is. And the short lady here is Ow Drinks Dude, which means she likes going to the pub, probably. This blonde lady here, Unibarga Strongbow, so she'd be a great soldier, probably. She'd make a strong soldier. Uh, this red haired lady here, Dow's Flower Hand, so maybe she likes flowers or her hands smell sweet. <laughs> I don't know. Fallard Kind Heart, uh, Alwyn the Unsteady, probably another pub goer. And Ate the Unwavering, another excellent name for perhaps an administrator or a soldier or something. So that, that was some changes to that mod. So it's called the Villager Diversity mod now instead of Big and Small. And yeah, it has lots more features. The only weird thing about it is that the hair, if you look at these women very closely, you'll see that they have like a fringe of dark hair underneath. There's something wrong with the way that the vanilla game does hair textures and it preserves that little bit of hair. But either way... I, I really like the fact that now the villagers are a little bit more diverse. So we've got our guys here and we're going to get started. So I'm going to, I skipped the tutorial. If you do the tutorial, it's a lot longer than it used to be. Uh, I'm not a huge fan, so do it once, but I definitely wouldn't recommend doing it. And we'll get started. So builder's cart and your builder's hut and, you know, you should do that close to the village center. Stick that there, sign some workers, you get your basic stuff going, like cutting down all these trees. I'm just going to kind of stack this behind here. So I'm not really sure where I'm going to do districts yet. And we need to get the stone going. And I think I noticed that the stone deposit, the nearest one, is quite far away. It's over here. Not actually sure if there's a closer one. Build that. It is very far away. It's going to be quite an efficient beginning. And because we're dealing with a vanilla map, we need to get the berry gatherers going. So we'll get the hut here. Got the woodcutters going, and we'll go ahead and paint their extraction zone. It's going to clear all this area for now. Deal with, deal with the consequences later. Reforestation. Now that's good. Another weird thing that the vanilla game does now is it basically gives you 12 people. So you get 10 people at the beginning, but then you get you always get two people right after that. I'm not really sure why. It used to be that you had to kind of work for those first immigrants, but I suppose it's part of the tutorial. When you skip the tutorial, you just get the two people right off the bat. All right, I'm going to turn off the territory boundaries. I'm just going to take a look around and just think about what we're going to be doing. So we're going to have this tightly compacted original village right here. Very shallow shoreline on both sides. So we're obviously going to have some fishing going on. We have fish in the lake, which is good. We have quite a bit of fish in the lake. And I don't immediately see fish in the river. So nothing nearby anyway. Yeah see anything nearby. So I think from a fishing perspective we're going to need to stick with lake, which is fine. And uh, in terms of mineral expansion, we're going to have trouble probably mining these because they're right on the river, but maybe we can... Um, actually, I think this is the only real one here. I think these are decorative. But maybe we can use terrain to kind of create an edge there, but we obviously have these. There's one, at least one there. So, we're going just fine there, getting the starting jobs set up. 
Now, with Balancing for Realism and Seasons installed, you have to be careful. So I'm going to just walk you through the beginning of the game because uh, we start in the spring, kind of the early summer of the year in the cool weather uh, climate. So we're going to get, you know, cool weather. We're going to get some rain. We have this ticker now which shows us the soil moisture. So if that gets up above 90, it gets to be really boggy and farming and stuff kind of slows down. Or if it's too dry, if this gets below 10, it uh, can also affect production. The temperature is 15 Celsius, which is a pretty good temperature for most anything. It's not hot. It's not warm, but it's not cold either. And 62% is a perfect uh, soil moisture. So things from a production perspective are fine. But you'll notice as we progress through the summer, it's going to get drier. It's going to get hotter. If it gets too hot, it can affect production. If it gets too dry, it can affect production. And then, of course, in the winter, it's going to be very tough because it's going to get cold. It's going to snow. And during those months, we're going to need lots of food stored. So the cool, temperate climate is definitely one of the tougher ones to deal with. But, you know, I made this mod, so I have to suck it up and deal with it. So here we can see the stumps mod doing its thing. So when they cut down a tree, it leaves a stump, which stays there for, I think, about a month. And then eventually disappears. But I like that uh, visual cue of, hey, where have I cleared the trees? Okay, you can see where it is with the stumps. So some other things that we need to pay attention to. So we are, we're kind of good because we have water from the original cart, but we need to get cracking on setting up all of the sort of basic infrastructure. So I'm going to go ahead and get a well going. And with the well, I always, almost always put that somewhere near the village center. In the new version of Water Sources mod, I have an option, some new options for wells, and I've also tightened up the graphics on some of the options. Like this one used to be a lot bigger, but it's now kind of a moderate size. I like this one because it's kind of a simple one. This one here is also a very rustic well. It's just a hole in the ground, natural spring, and you have a well like the vanilla. I think, though, I'm going to build this one. Um, one thing I did with all the mods, uh, basic materials and balancing for realism as I increased the tool cost of each of each building. So like you'll see the wells now cost five tools, which I think in vanilla I don't think they cost any tools or very few tools. But I, I really went through and made a good pass on trying to make things more realistic, especially from a tool perspective, because a lot of things like digging a well will require tools, right? The mechanisms, the pulleys, and the ropes, those are all tools. So just be aware that using my mod pack you can use a lot more tools than vanilla, which is why I gave you extra. So we'll get that well dug, and so we've got water coming in, we need food coming in, so we need a granary. So I like to kind of group my storage areas into one area, and I like to have them in a flat space because they look better on the flat. I don't want to impinge though on my fishing areas here, but I am going to just kind of create a little docklands area with, it's not as flat on the river side, but it's flat on the lake side, so I'm going to go ahead and put that there. And we're going to need a market, so markets should be in a central place but near the housing. And I'm kind of thinking of this area in the back being kind of an industrial area maybe the front being more the housing, so the market closer to the front. And for those who are old timers with markets, um, there used to be this thing where it mattered how many stalls were in each uh, market. That doesn't matter anymore. So I'm gonna, number one, I'm gonna rename my market and just call it the village market. And I'm gonna create a sub building. So this is new in 1.9, these sub buildings and people were really annoyed by these, and I was actually at first, but now I'm really happy that they made it this way. You'll see when we get to some complex monuments, this makes it much easier to manage uh, your complex monuments. So we've got a sub-building, which is market tables. You'll notice now that Fuelmongers is not its own building anymore, it's part of the market. And Market Carts is also part of the market as well, which it always was. Create a food stall. And I, I like my markets to be kind of s on a level, because they look better on a level. I think I have enough room here where I can just do a central 
circular market, which is what I usually do in the first village. Around. And we don't need a tent for the moment. It's gonna build it. We are gonna need fuel eventually, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the village market. So I add another sub building. Fuel monger's cart, which is wood. Next tube food stall. Assign the resource, which is fuel. I'm not going to assign a fuel monger until my fuel in the original cart gets down to zero. It's just a waste of a person. All right, so people are working away. We're getting some stone, which is an important early resource. We're getting more berries. Do you need to be sure that we stay on top of the berry production? And because this is so far away, um, it's probably pretty inefficient. So. Let's uh, let's keep an eye on that. It started out at 200, so let's just make sure if it starts to go down dramatically, we need to intervene. Okay, and we also need to set up our housing, so let's go ahead and zone for housing. I mentioned that I wanted the housing to be more on this side of the village. We need a few houses out here near the workplaces of these folks. So, but maybe closer to the village so that they don't have to traipse back and forth all the time. Us there. Make sure that spawns. It's here. In 1.9, the houses are just a little bit tighter, closer together, so you end up with slightly more um, compact cities, but at the same time, sometimes the houses can overlap and cause issues, so that's something to keep an eye on. In general, though, I'm pretty happy with. Pretty happy with the housing system in 1.9. It's not, it's tighter, but it's not terribly better. Okay, that's three houses that have spawned. And we'll go ahead and plan ahead and just say we're going to need a house up here on the hill for people that are working closer to the village center. Go ahead and zone for one more house here. Alright, so we should have. We have 12 people, which means we need six houses, two, two for each person. Oops. Not sure if we've gotten six to spawn yet. Here. One, two, three, four, five. Not sure we'll get a sixth one. All right, so that should start ticking down our building supplies. So we've got our fuel mongers cart done, we've got the market done, we're going to assign berries. Just going to go into this market tables and assign a worker. Miners. Need to get that granary done, so I'm going to prioritize that construction. I think we might be full, yeah, we're full on the woodcutters, so... In order to kind of use up some of that wood, this often happens at the beginning of the game. I'm going to go ahead and add another building cart. Builder's hut, rather. Just add those workers to that. Alright, we hit F2 to get into the list of workplaces. And I'm going to go ahead, I think the woodcutters are still full. Add that to the granary. Get those berries going. Gold is an issue in 1.9, right? Gold is now much more difficult to come by in the beginning of the game. So trade is really important. So what I need to start thinking about is how do I get my trade going? Make some gold. And I also need a tax collector to make sure that as my houses are being built, I can collect taxes. So I'm going to let the houses kind of start being built first, so I'll go ahead and prioritize all of those. So I don't want to build a tax collector before I have houses, for example. And I'm also going to cap my population. So I have 13 people at the moment. I'm going to probably pause immigration. Because what can happen at the beginning of the game is you can find yourself just never catching up with houses and food. Especially because as people arrive, houses will be rebuilt to be bigger. And that really sucks up a lot of your resources early on. 
So I'm going to be very conservative and just turn off immigration at the beginning and make sure that I get all of my original houses built, that I still have enough resources to build more houses, or that at least I haven't used it all up. And then I have enough food that's coming in. See how my berries are 200, which is good. I want to continue to make sure that that rises because during the summer months, I need to save up food in order to not run out later. I'm gonna actually add a second slot for berries in the granary. I also need to start trading and get my tax base going. So we are getting some houses built, which is great. Now I need to think about where my tax collector should go. So the, the manor, because I'm using authority, will probably serve many functions. So I want to keep enough space for that manor that it can expand. So I'm thinking maybe over here so it can expand a bit towards that direction. I'm going to start the manor. We'll call it Village Manor, rename it later. We've got uh, the Great Hall, Living Quarters, which is super useful when you're starting to densify your city later, Tax Office, and the Treasury. So we don't really need the Great Hall for a while. So we're going to start with the Tax Office. You'll notice that you have some extra pieces. This is from the Authority mod. And yeah, so we can just start with that. And the, the vanilla pieces use tools. And planks. So actually, before I get started with the manor, unless I use this one here, I need planks. But actually, I think I will use the stone one because I've got lots of stone. I only need wood, stone, and tile. I'll get started with this building here, and that won't use any tools, which is nice. Nor does it use planks, which is nice because I don't have to build the sawmill just yet. Let's try to orient this so that it kind of fits with the hill, which is good. Pop the door on the front, and we'll give it an interactive location. Actually, we'll put that in the parent building. Okay, maybe that doesn't work anymore. There it is. That interactive location, put that in the parent building. All right, so 20 gold to build the village manor and get a tax office going. Now let's check in on prosperity. So uh, most of the modded buildings are now added to the common path. So anything to do with farming, for instance, is going to be in here for sure, like the fishing ponds, storage, chickens, you know, vegetables, it's all in here. And one of the key things at the beginning of the game is you're going to need to get to 20 prosperity in order to unlock the second tier of food, like fish and vegetables. So at the moment, what I have access to is berries and poultry. But one of the challenges with poultry is that I need eggs to build my first poultry farms, you know, to hatch hatch the uh, animals. And I can only get eggs through trading to start with until I have my own poultry farm. So I have to trade for eggs and buy them. That takes gold. So I need to make sure I have a tax base and also that I'm trading other stuff to get gold. So I can trade berries, which isn't a great thing to do if you're using the seasons mod. If you're gonna be reducing your food stocks early on in the game, that can be troublesome when winter hits. So I'd rather preserve all of my food if I can. Uh, one other thing that I can easily make at the beginning of the game though is pottery. Because I have access to clay right away, I can make pottery and sell that. And so that can be my first export and that will help my gold situation not decline. So I'm going to need uh, to unlock this trading route. Now the balanced trading mod, which used to be called realistic trading, but it's called balanced trading now. It does a few things. The first thing it does is it adds modded goods to the trading uh, list, but it also removes things that are not really practical to trade by foot. You know, the, the traders in the vanilla game are on foot with a box on their back. And I think it's crazy that they can trade things like planks and stone so those things have been removed and those can only be traded. Some of them can be traded with the trading post. Some of the really heavy stuff like marble cannot be traded except using Harbor trading, which unfortunately is not ready for 1.9 yet. But nevertheless, most of the trading stuff's been implemented. So this new trading mod is uh, going to make it tougher to make money at the beginning because I don't have things selling things like, you know, planks and stone, but I can sell items that people would actually want to buy, which would be things like pottery. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock the trading route. It's going to cost me a ton of gold, by the way, but it's a necessary thing. And when I do that, I'm also going to get a 
a big bump to my prosperity because that trade route was worth 10 points of prosperity. So now I've unlocked some stuff in Kingdom and Labor. So like Labor now, I've unlocked this first tier of stuff. And this requires a lot of careful planning because if you've played 1.9, you know that you need to be very careful about your advancement in each estate. Otherwise, you can make the other estates angry and they won't want to uh, help you advance as much. So I have to be very careful about which one I'm going to pick in this game. I need to get started with tax. So I'm going to go to the money panel, go to taxes, and I'm going to crank up the tax rates. Thank heavens they reworked these. It used to be where you could either basically have no tax and no happiness impact, or you could have like 40% happiness impact. It's much more gradual now. So if I tick this up, you'll see that it'll knock their happiness back 5% and I'll get this much gold, 15% and I get this much gold. So at the moment, because people are so darn happy, I think I'm going to go ahead and tick it up uh, quite a ways. Get a 25% hit to happiness, but the 78 gold with the number of villagers that I have at the moment. So I'm going to watch my gold number, 260. I want to make sure that's starting to maintain or go up because the construction costs can be considerable at the beginning of the game. So what the tax office is also going to do is it's going to bump up my, uh, my splendor in labor, which is going to make the other estates angry. So I need to think hard before that gets built. I need to think hard about what I'm going to be doing one of the key strategies in the game is to pick two of the estates and work on those two estates first and get all the bonuses and everything and then work on the third estate. It would be very tough to get all three estates going at the same time. Probably possible, but, but very tough. Now, I always favor the labor estate at the beginning because it's got the market, it's got the manor, and those are critical items in your infrastructure. I do like the new monasteries. Don't get me wrong, I actually really like the new monasteries. I think they're they're fun. The Kingdom Estate, though, is actually probably more useful, even though it hasn't been reworked completely yet. It's more useful because it produces some unusual items, whereas the Clergy Estate at the beginning doesn't actually produce anything useful. Uh, it produces berries and herbs, like two of the least useful resources in the game. Later on, when you're doing winemaking and stuff, I'm sure it's useful. But then, you know, the Labor Estate can also provide luxuries. So I'm doing quite well because uh, I stopped immigration, so all the houses are almost built, my food stocks are going up, my resources are good, I have plenty of everything, and I'm about to get a tax collector. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock immigration, turn it back on, and I'm saying, good job, you have a berry surplus, so everybody's super happy, thank you, thank you. So that just gives you a happiness bonus on top. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on my income. So clay and thatch, two ways of getting income here. Do the same with the thatch. So we'll get the yard here. So leads around it like so. And we're going to build the Potter's Kiln. So our first true industry where we actually are adding value to a resource. And we can put the Potter's Kiln, uh, but we want it to be close to clay pit. So we'll go ahead and do pottery out of wood and clay. Let's stick it so the clay pit is there, so I'm just going to put this here. prioritize building the clay pits. Okay, so our village manor is finished, which means we can get a tax collector. Okay, so now we're all of a sudden in great need of lots of jobs. So I'm going to pick out these two builders. Pop one into the clay pit. Yeah, one into the clay pit, one into the tax collection. Okay, so I can see we got our first visitors as well. I'm not a huge fan of the tracking on the villagers, or the visitors, so I'll turn that off. Uh, what you should know about visitors is that they eat a lot of food. <laughs> so if you're short on food and you have any choice in terms of whether to accept the visitors or not, you know, don't because uh, they eat a ton of food. And now one of them is a courier. So hello there. It says, meeting the elders, 
Much respected leading men and women from the region's laborers heard of your village and wished to make themselves useful. So this is a new little reward quest that gives you 10 influence and 10 tools, which is always nice. And you'll notice too that the villager diversity mod works on visitors, so they also have like red hair, different hair colors and stuff, which is cool. So we got 10 influence. Now my influence will rest at 10, which is good. Um, sometimes you kind of need to hurry and spend your influence because it, if this cap is lower, it'll de decline over time. But because I'm at 10, I'm good. I don't need to worry about using this influence quickly. And anyway, I can't because the only things that use influence are things that require 30 prosperity, and I'm not even close to that. But the tools are awesome, so thank you. And just to check in on the gold. So I'm starting to collect some tax, which is great. 16, but my upkeep is also starting to, to bite. So you'll you'll see probably at the beginning of the game that the tax income and the upkeep are usually about the same. And you need to be careful not to increase your upkeep. Like don't build a big church right off the bat. Berries are maintaining, but they're going to start to decline. So what we need to do, we, we unlock the trade route. So let's go into our trade screen and we need to buy the first eggs. So to build the first poultry farm, I'm gonna need 30 eggs. So here, 30. Now 30 times four is 120, which is most of my gold. But this will happen over the course of three weeks as the trader comes three different times. So it is gonna use up a lot of gold, but I'm going to also turn on exporting pottery. So as soon as I have some pottery being built, being made, that'll start to uh, be used up. And then the last thing I need to do is I need to unlock the warehouse so that I can sell the pottery. So that's 25 gold. And we need to build a warehouse. Because you can't sell it if it's not in a warehouse. Or a grain. Alright, just kind of set here. Alright, warehouse. Alright, so things are starting to look like a little village here. We've got the houses spread out across the shore few little jobs out here. We're starting to really develop this area by the lake, which is great. I'm also, just so I don't forget later, I'm going to turn on trading to buy tools and buy up to 20 tools. But I have lots more than that now. So even though they just disappeared. Now, one, one weird thing that happens in this game is that when the transporters grab, they grab the tools out of the village center and moved them to my warehouse causes the inventory to go to zero, even though those tools are actually being transported. Like you can see, they're still there. Um, and that triggers a quest from the Balancing for Realism mod, which says, hey, you look like you need help because you're out of tools. Even though uh, I'm not out of tools, if I wait a minute, it'll just pop back in here. This is a bug though that uh, the, the devs are aware of that it reduces the inventory. So anyway, it triggers this quest and the quest basically says, Hey, you need help. The king's offering you a one-time gift, and you can choose what he gives you. So we could get 250 gold coins, which would be really nice. We could get a ton of berries, which is also really nice. Uh, a lot of wood. We're really short on wood, but, you know, wood, you can chop more trees, so I'm not sure I want that. 20 tools, also not, you know, nothing to sniff at, so to speak. Bunch of new immigrants. Hmm, tempting, but no. Or ignore his advice. So, you know, all things considered, I'm going to go with gold because I can use the gold for lots of different things. All right, so we should be getting some eggs. Yep, so we've got some eggs now from the trader who's been by, which is super. And that'll slowly go up to 30. We can build our first chicken farm. So I'm going to check my log and see I got 12 eggs from them. And this is kind of how I track the trading now. Like, there are other ways to track it, but I like using the log F7 to see what are people bringing and, and buying and selling. So one weird bug with 1.9 is that if you build a monument, its functions become available immediately. So I can, that wasn't built yet, but I could still put a carpenter in it, which is weird. But anyway, now it's actually built. So the carpenter is legit. Start to build some planks, which is good. But we're also gonna start to run out of wood that's easily available to this woodcutter. I usually have a forester planting trees in the middle of the town and cutting wood in the town because it's a lot more efficient than having a forester way out on the edge of town. That changes later in the game, of course. 
going to add a second clay pit to support that industry. Right about here. Yeah, I'd love to see love to see some pottery exports, which is gonna require us to have pottery stored in warehouse. So we gotta unlock it. Chickens. Get your poultry out. So we always I always start with the chicken house producing eggs because eggs are the foundation for getting all the other industries up and running. So without eggs you ain't gonna get much get very far. So we'll go ahead and pop one here. And we'll do three flocks of chickens, which is the minimum required in order to produce a poultry farm. And that's really all I'm gonna have here anyway. Alright, we've got some new people, which is good. And we've got wood for the king. So I'll get 100 gold coins, which is nice, no question. But 100 wood is a lot of wood at this point. And they only give you 15 days to do this. If I miss out, I lose some influence. I think I will gamble, though. I'll go ahead and stockpile wood. So that'll prevent it from being used by the construction or sawmill. All right, it's starting to warm up. It's 20 degrees. Nice soil moisture, so we're right in that sweet spot of production. All right, the trader came. He gave me the last six eggs, so I can build this. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off trading for eggs. Because now I can produce my own eggs. I can use this upgraded house as a place to gather wood. So I'm going to go ahead and gather wood out of that and add some workers there once I have a few extra. There's some newcomers coming in now. Thank you very much. And we'll get you guys going, getting to work on cutting some wood. And what was the other thing I needed? Probably the clay worker. Okay, so there's a warning that says security. So as soon as you have 20 people, it unlocks the security buildings. Security in this version of the game is not as hard as it used to be. So you can also produce security in each estate. Monks can produce uh, security, soldiers can produce it, or guards in the Lord Manor. So it's pretty easy to produce, and it's not too onerous. But you do have to make sure that you do produce it, otherwise people start stealing things. So as far as security goes, I'm going to add... So uh, just as a note, security also now requires that you protect houses because they have gold in them from the tax collector. So we... In order to protect the whole village, if I built a tower like right here, it's not going to extend all the way out here to these workplaces. Um, so I might be able to build a tower here which can cover the entire village. I'm not sure actually, but it's worth a try. So let's go ahead and build a new... Oh, the church. Oh my goodness, I totally forgot about the church. Yeah, we're going to need to build a church first. Security can come later because it's not until you have 50 people that you actually... Um, People start stealing things. Okay, so the church can go right here. So we'll call this the Chapel of St. Nothing. And we'll go ahead and add a simple building here. I'm going to make it over complicated. Thanks to the Rustic Church rework mod, we only need a nave and a door. That's it. It's going to cost some tools, some planks, some stone, but I have all of those, except maybe the planks. That'll that'll bump the residential desirability ni nicely around these houses, which is good. And it's nice and central for people as well. Okay, so we've got the wood. We do that, and we get our 100 gold. Thank you very much. And then we turn off stockpile. Alright, so gold-wise, we're doing good, actually. Our gold is seems like it's holding steady. We got 100 gold from the king, which is super. Tax is almost keeping up with upkeep, not quite. We lost some money for eggs, but that's okay. That's finished. We're on the verge of being able to produce our own pottery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divert one of these pottery clay workers and stick them in here. Take some pottery. We're going to need a second warehouse to 
put the pottery in. Now one thing I can do is I can wait until I have 20 prosperity so that I can unlock the small storage warehouse, which is not as huge as it, you know, doesn't take up as much space. I'm getting close to 20 prosperity. Um, I need some splendor, so... Wow, this is so changed from when the village started. There were trees everywhere, and now it's just sort of stump land. We're up to 24 people, so this is this is the danger zone here, because we're starting to consume a lot. But there's a, a lot of construction going on. On the other hand, we need to accumulate resources, because this is the prime season for, for uh, food. So we just need to balance everything very carefully at this point. And we're starting to get a, a level of unhappiness, which is not helpful. All right, so Chapel of Saint Muffin is finished, so we got 45 people to accommodate in there, which is plenty. So now everybody can get their get their fix. The other thing we need to be careful of: the markets, if they're not improved, they have very little capacity. And with 25 people, we're going to need a market tent. So I'm going to double click there. This is what I was saying about the sub-building. Some people are annoyed by it because they have to go click here and then they have to go here and click on this. Actually, all you really need to do is double-click on the market tables and you're in that sub-building. So we're going to add a tent. Now, if you add this kind of dirty white tent, you get the capacity, but you don't get any splendor. Whereas if you use this one, same cost, but you get two splendor, which is super. Pop that on there. Build. It'll increase the capacity, which means that we'll be less likely to run out of berries. You can see it's already running low here. It's just because people are eating it, you know, buying it faster than they can replenish the 10, I think, that they can get. Hey, we got an actual village now, right? We got a church, we got a little tiny manor, lots of houses along the shore, which is very pretty. I think this is a lovely place to build a village. It's, what a great setting. The hills behind it. Lake. Super. Super. Love, I love the map generator. So the other thing we need we can do then is to add more splendor to the market. And I love these little market benches. We'll sit, so we're gonna add a bunch of those. Let's add some around the well. Now they do cost quite a bit of money to make to, to place, but uh, they're gonna add lots of splendor. And it just it's just so fun to watch the villagers sitting there. It's gonna cost me seventy-five bucks, which is a lot. That's the price of greatness, I guess, because we gotta get that splendor in order to get the warehouse. So lots of progress made in the last little bit. The village is really shaping up. We have our first industry, which is the clay and pottery industry, which is almost ready to export. We've cleared lots of ground for whatever, but need to kind of reforest that. Plenty of houses, and we've kept up with the housing because we turned off immigration early in the game, which was really important. We have our first um, chicken farm established, and we'll start producing even more food as we go. Yeah, I think the, the village is looking very promising, so this is a great start. And we'll, when we come back to this, we will be preparing for winter. I'm going to be stockpiling even more food. And we're going to perhaps even start a third food to make sure that we can capitalize on the compost that we're going to be collecting. We're going to be making sure that our trade is up and running, that we're making gold from not only tax collection, but also from selling things to the traders.